Hey everyone, welcome back to the Mabu Studios channel. Today we're going to talk about the band word list or the filter list or spam, all those things. I find that it's one of the most important things to have as a brand, a business, and a channel. And yet I continually run into people that their list of words that is banned is completely blank. So, uh,. We're just going to hop over to the analytics and, and get into it and that type of thing. And I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. I'm going <clears> to <throat> show you some case studies. All right. So you can see on this page up top, we've got the published comments. These are ones that are automatically going to be published, right? So they haven't triggered anything I've said or anything like that. Uh, then you've got held for review, which is the next one. This is 114 comments that have been held for review. Now, I get a lot of comments, so yours might say, two or 50 or whatever um, but we get quite a bit and then there's likely spam and so those are the three categories we're going to talk about today and if we go over to community settings down on the left hand side here there should be a setting we can set initially that YouTube will help us with now I should mention right away that um, there are going to be swear words, you're going to see stuff on screen, even stuff like that. So, um, you know, if that offends you, please click away now. Or if you're at work or something like that, it might not be the best thing to listen to. Uh, but if we scroll down, so up top, I've got a list of moderators for my channel. Uh, I've got hidden users. So these are all the people that have, like, grossly um, not been a positive thing to my channel. And then up here is approved users. These are people that would never have to be moderated. I haven't really found a use for this yet. Um, you know, usually if you make them a moderator, you don't have that need. So it would it would be a case where someone's super helpful but not worthy of being a moderator for some reason. That's where you'd use that. Uh, and then you've got a long list of um, basically key not keywords but banned words. So this is a list that I basically downloaded. Uh, from the internet I found it somewhere and then I added a bunch of words and and uh, so I'll provide that down in the description a download link to that now what I was getting to here is the blocked links list so YouTube has this installed and this didn't always exist by the way this is a newer feature um, but basically new comments with hashtags and URLs are held for review live chat messages with URLs will be blocked um, so that's important, right? And I'll explain why, but from a business standpoint, what if it was your competitor's links or what if it was just links to bad reviews or, you know, anything like that? Like that's not really the intention, what to block there. Mostly what it's there to do is to block, for, Hey, come look at my channel. Hey, come to this website and buy, you know, pills or whatever. Like it's, it's meant for spam detection. Uh, and then you've got default settings down here. And you can allow all comment, comments. You can hold potentially inappropriate comments for review. And this is in uh, beta testing for YouTube. So this is a newer thing. Um, I do recommend clicking that on. It seems to be fairly accurate. Um, you could also hold all comments, which a channel for my size, if I was working, nothing's going to get seen. People are going to get angry. So I don't choose that option. What we know about YouTube currently is they want to make the platform a better place. And they've always wanted that. And so much so that during Adpocalypse 3.0, if you want to call it that, they now take into account the comments that are left on a video. So they're scanning comments to see whether a video is regarded well, regarded bad, if there's hate speech, if there's tons of swearing, stuff like that. They're going to go, ooh, not family friendly. Let's. It's actually one of the sources for demonetization currently. Um, but let's go back to messages and let me show you a real life use of, um, oh, this is the messages, but let me go to comments here. This is a real life use of that big long list that I showed you that I use. So you can see right here without even, you know, this is one I've missed in my comments list. Um, you know, this person says, wow, that's badass. And they've used dollar signs to get around the, the word filter. Now, that's not the worst thing I've ever seen. It's not horrible, you know, but in general, I like to keep my comment section as politi politically correct as possible, as the least offensive. So, in my opinion, YouTube, which is a business, 
I consider YouTube to be a business, whether you own a business or not. It is a business that generates you income. You produce a product. People consume it. Uh, in business, it's usually a game of offending the least amount of people. So if you love a sports team and hate another sports team, anyone who loves that other sports team, you're offending. And so the less information you share about that kind of stuff, the easier it is to bring on a customer. And likewise, if someone was to walk into the room and a 15-year-old or a 14-year-old person was reading the comment section and it was filled with swear words, perhaps their parent would be like, oh, you cannot watch this anymore. So uh, with something like that, I just delete it because it doesn't really add anything to the conversation. You know, if it was a big paragraph that was really in-depth and awesome, um, then I would, you know, go ahead and leave it and maybe, you know, ask them to correct or something like that. But otherwise, I would just delete it. So I'm going to hit the delete button. All right. Case study starts now. So we have Spidey does it. That tank is fucking amazing. Doesn't need to be there, you know. So <clears throat> in general, I will, like that one, it's a good-natured comment. So I won't ban the person, but I will just delete the comment going, well, yeah, maybe they're excited for the content. You know, everyone can get excited. That's fine. But it caught it. That's good, you know. So we just hit the remove comment. The next one is, it's about biology and stuff like that. I read through it a little bit earlier. It seems perfectly fine. Uh, I don't know what word actually caught this, and YouTube itself could have just flagged this. So all you got to do is hit the approve button. Now here's one of the perfect examples in my opinion. So this caught the word damn. Not the worst word ever. I would normally just let that go. But then you see the username, funny shit. Like, oh, okay. They've got 17,000 subscribers, so they're a channel and everything like that. But to me... Every time they leave a comment, no matter what it is, even if they're like, hey, Corey, I love Mabu Studios. It's so cool. Funny shit is going to show. And that's just not good for the community I'm building. So they just, I hide all of their comments. All right. And now this is the perfect scenario as a business. I was waiting to get to this one because I saw it a little bit earlier. And I go, this, this right here is perfect. So the first thing to know is this came seven hours ago. I was asleep. Seven hours ago was 3 o'clock in the morning for me. I was asleep, right? But I did a review on a light. It's a product we sell, and it's the 3.0. It just came out. It literally launched yesterday, you know, and that would be 2 slash 9 2018, depending on when you're watching this. Uh, but you can read this here. Warning about this light. The app sucks hard. Seriously, look at the reviews. Like with all equipment that uses an app, instead of a dedicated proper piece of hardware, the quality is horrible. Companies are notorious for doing this to cut costs and reduce quality. Dedicated hardware controllers are always superior. You have been warned. And then a link. Luckily, the link caught it, right? Now, you might be going, okay, this guy sounds like he's got a leg to stand on. Well, let's click on this, shall we? We open that up. And here we are on the review. Like, oh, man, it gets horrible reviews. Now, if you're not in my business, you don't know this, but I know this. This is a link to a completely different light sold by Fluval. So they are slamming the new light based on an app that is not even designed for that light. So that, you know, is a problem. They, they think it's the same. That's the thing, is they think it's the same, but when you look at it, you're going to go, wait a second, this isn't what it is at all. So that's the problem right there it you know it was last updated october 24th 2017 and it's on version 1.1.3 now in the video if you were to watch the video that i made it shows you that the app i'm using is on version 1.04 and was just released so this is a comment that while not the worst to my business but you can imagine if this goes forward and this is the day after launch we're still having thousands of people look at this they might click on that and go oh man Corey doesn't know what he's talking about <clears throat> I'm not gonna buy this light and it's gonna cost me money as a business now this person's trying to help so I wouldn't ban them but I would delete the comment just like that and so there you can see how that right there probably saved me hundreds of dollars today alone all right let's look at the last one the likely spam folder here. This is all stuff that even YouTube knows this is not right. So sub for sub stuff, in general, I just instantly ban them because if they're trying sub for sub now, 
and that's not working, they're likely to just try and get around it a different way. So I just ban them from the channel. This person says, or trying to say first, that's that's a fine comment, I suppose. There's nothing wrong with that. Just spamming me? Eh, that I usually just ban the person. Like it, it's, And it's one of those things, if you only had like, 100 subscribers, you'd be a lot more careful who you ban probably, but with 115,000 and gaining hundreds every day, if you're not continually, you know, culling the worst one-tenth of a percent, it will turn into a cesspool, uh, in my opinion. I, I see it on big YouTube channels all the time. Um, so yeah, I think that, I think you get the general summary of what's going on there, um, uh, like I said, I'll put a link in the description to where hopefully I can put it up on like a Google shared drive and you could download the long list. Uh, hopefully that helps you guys. I highly recommend getting a word set. It doesn't have to be as stringent as mine. It could be 10 times more stringent if you want. And there's probably specific things about your channel that might come to play, especially if you were... Uh, focusing on something that's a little racy or you know political or anything like that or anything that is known to trigger your followers or get people fighting. My whole goal is that people can come to my channel, they can get information, they don't have to feel bad. It's a safe space where you can ask a question and not get flamed and not get trolled and all those things. And that has provided or proved to be very successful for you know, making money and doing things that it needed to do for my business. Now, this whole video is targeted towards business people and YouTube people. Uh, so I highly recommend you employ some of those uh, tactics also. And, uh, you know, good luck. And hopefully we'll see you in the next video. Normally I'd be live on a Sunday, but uh, I have a speaking engagement, a public speaking thing. So I have to be there instead. So hopefully this video helped you. And uh, good luck on YouTube and your business.